Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And today we're playing a game of D-Day. Yes, the old one, Avalon Hill, put out about whew, 25 years ago or so. So we are looking forward, I guess it's about 20 years ago. Looking forward to a good game here. Got all of our reinforcements set up. There's no economy in this game. It's a simple die roll and you put on that many reinforcements. And uh, Germans obviously have theirs, far more tanks. But if you've never played this game before, there are some interesting uh, minor notes. It's a 10 round game. You do 10 rounds and at the end of it, the goal is to have control of the three cities, Cherbourg, Saint-Lô, and Caen. And if you have them, you win the game. But battle is only one round and you can share territory with troops. So the Germans, a good tactic they have is to kind of lay low back here where they're not going to get destroyed and then rush in on the last turn and hopefully uh, cause enough grief that they can hold on to a city. Other people line up here and just try to pound as much allied stuff into the ground so that they can't come and take the cities. But the Allies also have air power, and the air power comes in the form of four American and four British fighters, and they each have one bomber. And they come on, the bombers just snipe, and the fighters are meant to dissuade movements. So if you put a fighter here, and this guy tries to move in, he gets shot at, at a 1 on a D6. So, yeah, 15, 16, 16.7% chance of getting hit, I guess. Um, it happens more often than you think. But also, anywhere you see an anti-aircraft gun, the venerable 88s, where you see them, if a fighter goes in there, they get shot at by those. So, uh, also at a one. So, it can cause quite a bit of grief. Uh, these are, are a finite resource. They get shot down, they are gone for the game. And of course, you have the beach zones, the five beach zones. Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword. And you have some para drops. The British para with some Canadians in there, historically. And then the 101st and the 82nd uh, landing here. And when you do your reinforcements, they come on on the arrows, and you're limited by the number of units that each beach can support. So Utah, can, you can only bring four units in, and Omaha can only bring in eight. Uh, which you typically want. It is a very tough nut to crack. It's, uh, in my gameplay, it has never fallen on round one. And even by round two, it's rare. So you got 10 turns, remember. So if you get held up on the beach at Omaha, it's just like the real deal. You, uh, you are in jeopardy of losing everything. All right, well, we're gonna get going here and I've got uh, a bridge too far on the TV. You can see up there. Uh, and it's going to be playing here. We'll see where we are, uh, how Monty's game plan goes, and here we're going to see how Eisenhower's game plan goes. Wish us luck. All right, round one is done, and a couple minor surprises. Uh, big surprise here. This rarely happens. The entire Omaha Beach contingent was wiped out, so I landed the eight of them. And there were eight. The uh, blockhouses didn't get a sh chance to shoot because they got destroyed by battleships' fire. Um, but when they landed, the German defense got five hits in defense, and then in the attack, it finished off the other three. So, yeah, that was a pretty bad round <laughs> for, the, for the Americans. More luck here on Utah Beach. They were able to come in and establish themselves. And uh, only got a three, but again, all the... All of the top row has to come in on Utah Beach, as you can see here, Utah Beach only. So for regardless of what you roll, you can only bring in four units at a time, which means your first two rolls are going to be all Utah Beach, and then whatever the remainder is for the next roll uh, can come in at um, Omaha Beach only. Okay, So Omaha Beach has no reinforcements this next turn. And that will be that. Uh, the British uh, had some, uh, nah, oh, I'd like to call it success, but they didn't get any hits. So <laughs> the Germans got no hits either, so that's all right. But the blockhouses over here uh, had two hits, and so this target 
stuff, so they took killed a tank and an artillery, leaving the British with just four men to storm the beaches, and only two survived. Uh, they got one hit, though. They did themselves proud. Over here, one tank was taken out by a fighter when it was placed here. Actually, was it? Yeah, uh, yes, one was taken out here, and one was taken out here. Uh, but all of these six got on safely. They're from the uh, Rennes or Chartres. And there you go. All right. Well, we will see what goes on. No planes are lost. So they still have their full air force. But uh, this is going to be a pretty, pretty slow slugfest here for the Americans. We'll see if they're able to pull something out of the bag here. Uh, that's going to be tough. Because now the Germans, well... Ah, lots of dice to roll. We'll see. But I think the British might have to come over here and help out. All right, round two. Coming up. Oh, the Deadpool, in case you were wondering. Oh, sorry for the shadow there. Here's the Deadpool there. And so you see the British uh, lost seven units. Americans lost uh, nine. And uh, the Germans lost a whole bunch more, but they've got a whole bunch more to lose. And as you can see, we're at the moment in the movie where James Caan is hiding in a jeep with his beat-up captain, his shot-up captain. He's trying to get him back to the med station. Ah, hope he makes it. Okay, headed for round three. And yeah, it's quite a log jam here at the uh, Utah, or Omaha Beach. Uh, we rolled a four again, so the Americans are not getting on the board very quickly. And uh, that's all they can bring on, so he's probably going to be dead on his attack, but what can you do? Uh, over here, the British are piling into Juno because the only uh, blockhouse that can still fire, fires on sword. But they rolled a six, and they can only put five in Juno, so here they come. The Germans have a lot of power on this side the British are going to have to face. That's going to be pretty difficult, and more guys coming up here. Germans didn't lose anything to the air power this turn. Uh, but as you can see from the Deadpool, the Americans lost a bomber and the British lost a fighter. So that's costly this early in the game. And we'll see how telling that is as we go. Uh, up here on the Cotentin Peninsula, the Americans have numbers, um, but always tough to get up into Cherbourg. We'll let you know how it goes right after this. Okay, turn three is in the books, and here we go. A uh, little bit of creeping up there by the Americans, and the Germans decided to stack into Cherbourg. Uh, not everybody, but seven buddies. And then they've got uh, four reserves back there on the uh, end of the peninsula. Americans not landing much stuff except at Omaha. Hopefully they can break through. They got some firepower now. So there is hope. If they can smash all this this turn, there is hope. And the British, the beaches are looking pretty, pretty good. Unfortunately, there's a lot of German stuff coming this way. And some German stuff in the middle. They did lose two infantry to the aircraft here. That they're coming in at Chartres. And uh, that can always help a little bit for the Allied cost. Over here, these eight German uh, came in and they hit two on the British, the six British. So the British had six return fire at two and they got nothing. So, And if you don't know, two interesting things here. The German tanks attack and defend at a three, but the Allied tanks attack at a three, defend at a two. And nobody's artillery actually increases infantry attack. I think that's probably a good idea. I think you run through units way too quickly. Speaking of running through units quickly, the British roll a 10, and so they're down to their last seven units. The Americans have a plethora to put on, of course, and the Germans, uh, pretty much on average, they're doing about what they do each game. So they still have eight Panzer divisions to bring on, but you can see they've lost nine Panzer divisions, to say nothing of all of the infantry. British, those are their losses on the game so far, and here are the American losses. No aircraft loss this turn. All right, turn four. This is going to be an interesting battle. Okay, so we are 40% of the way through the game. Uh, if we look up here, Americans are kind of 
tightening the noose on Cherbourg, but that's a very tough nut to crack. And uh, didn't put a lot of reinforcements on there this time. Kind of looking at Saint Lo as uh, being the major key uh, because the Germans have a ton of stuff down here, and the British, everything that they have is now on the board. So this is going to be tough. They have Khan right now, but they've lost seven units here in the past two turns. And uh, the Germans lost three, I think, maybe four. Um, so that's uh, not a good trade-off for the British. So I, as the commander of both sides, have decided that Khan is going to be what we're going to fight over. So we have all of our units here, and we are just going to push on Khan. Uh, obviously, there's not a lot of German stuff left, left to come on in the east. So we've got the western half has a number of units left, but just a single artillery. So all of that's going to be going on here, so that can help out San Lo. But everything here is going to steer towards Khan and hopefully be able to annihilate the British. To say nothing of the fresh American units coming on uh, to the board, but uh, not much left for them. Another two die rolls, I predict, and uh, they'll all be on the board. No planes were lost, but a couple of infantry were lost to the planes. So trying to keep the Germans down a little bit. But round five. This is not looking good for the Allies, but I've said that before. And then the dice decide to perk up for them a little bit. But they've really been shredded here and haven't really dealt much out to the Germans. We'll see what we can do. We're going to pile some fighters into Khan every turn. And hopefully snipe some Germans as they approach. Turn five. All right, halfway through the game, and up here, the Americans continue to just coagulate some units up here, uh, not, uh, not wanting to go in before they're fully ready to go. So probably two more turns, and then the attacks will begin in earnest. And just hope that you get enough hits. There's 11 units up there, 12 including the blockhouse, but that hopefully will be destroyed. Finally... Omaha Beach is cleared, and the last artillery was killed, last uh, attack, and no reprisals, so that was nice. Over here, I'd like to see what a difference a turn makes, but uh, yeah, it's kind of back and forth like crazy here. And uh, the British took it on the chin over here again, um, and you got these four panzers. But the good thing about this is that that's it for the Germans. That's all that's coming in over here. The rest is going to have to come in as close as you can get. So that's why they roll an eight. All eight are here. and be funneling, funneling towards Khan. You can see there's four fighters there just because that's where I'm going to leave them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, when the Germans come in, they'll get shot at. So trying to do a spoiling attack up here with the Germans. Uh, mildly successful. Um, in that I killed one thing and lost one thing. So that's pretty much status quo. But now the Americans can come down and lend a hand. But San Lo cannot be ignored. And there are three more units, one of each, coming in for the Germans. And that they will likely head for San Lo. That would give them eight units that the Americans have to dispatch. And uh, maybe yes, maybe no. They have a few units left here. On the card, seven to be exact. So likely on this turn, and at the very latest on turn seven. I put these guys here, just two of them, um, because from here they can get to Saint Lo in two and three to Cherbourg, and we have five turns left. So I'll get a feel for what's going on within by turn eight. I'll know if they have to go north, because they can go eight, nine, ten, make an attack or they can come down here. So I'm just going to leave them there and see if they can have anything to do with the end of the game. All right, well, the British are stuck here in Khan. The Germans are swarming all over the place. Guess we'll see if they can hold on here on turn six. Okay, just a quick little insert here. Um, so desperate times call for desperate measures, and that's exactly what I said before I put the fighters there. And then you roll one die for each of the anti-aircraft. They hit on a one. Yeah, they both hit. So the Americans just lost two fighters. 
So, yeah. <sighs> Poor as heck. All right, well, the turns speed up a little bit as you go, because if there's no conflict, it goes pretty quickly, and there's not a lot of units in some areas. So no conflict on this side of the board. The Americans rolled enough to bring everybody on. They've got everybody on, the British have everything on, and now the Germans have everybody on. So no more reinforcements for anybody here on turn seven. And forward, that's fairly typical. So, a little bit of breathing room for the British. They were able to come in. There were four German tanks there. And they came in and smashy smash. And were able to kill all four. And the Germans came back and only got a one hit back on them. So that was nice. Uh, still the Germans outnumber them greatly here. But they got to get unstuck and they got to get through the fighters, which we haven't dared try yet. Once we're in, we're in, but uh, getting in there can be something of an ordeal. Of course, the Allies are down to five fighters now. You saw the death of two, and the British one early on turn one or two, and the American bomber as well. So the air power has not, uh, not been real bad. Uh, I think they've taken out one tank and about six, seven infantry. But beyond that, that's all they've done. And for the for the loss of... Um, three of the fighters and one bomber. All right, so here we go. This is, we're down to it now. We're going to have the British likely try to take out this stack here using the tanks. You always want to use your tanks on offense when you're the allies. Um, and uh, the Americans may have to come and rescue the British here. Uh, in fact, I'm Pretty sure they have to because if they don't these two artillery are just going to die and then the germans can go whole hog into Khan, which they're probably going to do this turn anyway but if they can go in with fewer tanks that would be great usa to the rescue but they got their own problems i guess we'll see what turn seven brings right after this all right so whoever's in charge of stopping me from saying stupid things you're fired I put the American guy there and said, lightning can't strike twice, and yeah, look at that. All right, turn eight, and this will go pretty quickly, I think. So the Americans went into Cherbourg with eight units, and they all died. And they were able to dispatch only four Germans. But the Germans now have nothing else up there, and I decided to bring tanks this way, land on this side, because uh, I thought I might need them, and I think I will. So I'm glad that they're there. And this is the turn we have to decide what to do with buddies here, and we'll see. Over here, San Lo is still well stocked, and this is it for the Americans. It's all they got. And they went in to try to help the British, and it went miserably bad. Um, yeah. And then the German counterattack went miserably bad. So not a lot of death and destruction, but uh, yeah, not, uh, not a great turnout by either side on that one which always plays into the German hands, because if they have units left, they're likely in the city. So they went into Khan, and they brought in six infantry into Khan. Six infantry. And I have four fighters. That's 24 dice. Got one hit. <laughs> one hit on 24 dice at one. Uh, even low luck would give me four hits, but just got one. So uh, the Germans, I figured I wasn't going to push my lock and send in tanks because I thought that's when the dice will start hitting. So we have got this little force in here, hoping to go in and make Khan a real problem. Over here, the Germans attacked and only got one hit and only had one hit against them. So, but these tanks are stuck now. So they're likely not long for this world. Hopefully they can take out some Germans on their way out the door. All right, that's it folks. Three turns left. <sighs> Could be kind of crazy. Could be kind of crazy. We'll let you know. All right, two turns remain, and this is going to be the one where the Americans go in. Got some tank support now. And, uh, yeah, buddies went up, so they might have to be in the final battle. San Lo, we bombed them for one last turn, thinking one dice might be enough. But the entire Anglo-American contingent got wiped out. Had four artillery and four tanks there for the Germans. 
eight dice and they got seven hits. And then the British on their way out the door with the Americans had six dice and they got four hits. So at least it was a little bit of fun. Now at least we can put a bomber on this and hopefully kill one tank because I think there's just too much stuff. Unless these fighters get really, really hot, I think there's just too much stuff and Khan is going to end up being contested. There are only five ground units in Khan. It is surrounded by 15 and there's one in there for 16. So over three to one odds for the Germans. Like I say, the, the planes could get hot, right? They're only four dice per unit coming in and you roll them one at a time. And it could be uh, telling, but I think this is the worst game I've seen the Allies play in a long time. They've had some horrible dice for them and some really bad dice against them. Like losing eight units here and then losing six units in one roll here uh, really hurts, especially at this stage of the game. But we're going to change up our fighters and we're going to put two in there and two in con. That's, I don't know if that's the way to go because then we kind of get the, the tanks coming and going. Or let's just, nah, we'll put them all in there because they got to go in there anyway. But if some of these anti-aircraft survive, on turn 10 when I go to place the fighters, you got to roll for the anti-aircraft. <sighs> the joys of war. All right, two turns remain. I wasn't looking at my phone, I don't know when it shut off, but I was just saying that if we can get three hits, and we got two. So it's two hits against the Germans, so that means they're going to have four at two, and one at three. If they get three hits, actually even if they get any hits, it's game over. Yeah, so that's game over, it's now mathematically... Well, no, I shouldn't say that, because the, the British could get three hits here. The British could get three hits. So if the British get three hits here in defense, here you go. Oh, 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 oh. okay. Well, that is the closest game I have ever seen of this uh, wonderful offering. And uh, the Germans win the game, because Khan is contested. Doesn't get any closer than that, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. hope you enjoyed a little bit of the action here at the last round. And as we always say, thank your friends for playing. Hug your loved ones. And may those dice, as fickle as they are, be with you.